Brandon Jones has a new home for 2025. NASCAR is hoping to get the charter deal done this week. There's a new NASCAR weekly show coming to TV. Plus, NASCAR wants IndyCar's most popular star. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. As you heard in the opener right there, we have a lot of things to talk about. There's no time to lollygag around. We got to get right into it. Starting off with the top, the big story of the day so far is the fact that Brandon Jones has a new home for 2025. If you've been paying attention to anything I've been saying in any of the Silly Season videos, you know that he's leaving Junior Motorsports at the end of the year, and he is headed back to Joe Gibbs Racing, where he raced at from 2018 until the end of the 2022 season. He racked up five wins over there in that time period he'll be leaving Junior Motorsports after two full-time Xfinity Series seasons to go back to where he had his most success at uh, at this point. So for Brandon Jones, two years at Junior Motorsports resulted in really not much. A 14th place finish in the point standings in 2023. This year in 2024, not looking great either. He has a best finish with JRM of second uh, back at Charlotte in the springtime with the team. He just hasn't found the speed with that number nine car the same way that he did over at Joe Gibbs Racing in that 19 car. Listen, if it wasn't for Ty Gibbs probably pissing him off, he I, it probably would have stayed over there for a little bit longer, maybe, and never have gone and done the JRM experiment. But hey, Junior Motorsports has a great equipment. We've seen Sam Mayer win it. We've seen Justin Allgaier win in it. We've seen Josh Berry win in it. Um, Brandon Jones just hasn't gotten those results yet, and his money wants to go back to Joe Gibbs Racing, and that's where he's going. I know a lot of people on the internet are upset about this, saying that the guy has done absolutely nothing. He wrecks a lot of race cars, and he still gets rides over guys like Carson Quapel, Ryan Shrex, and, and others. I'm not going to disagree with that, right? It's the privilege of having wealthy parents and wealthy connections. You have this budget and they're like, listen, we understand it's not going well over there. Let's send you back over here where you were doing good. It's like moving around like private schools. And you're like, okay, well, you didn't succeed over there. And it was because the teachers were against you. You didn't succeed over at this team. It's because the crew chief wasn't just wasn't good enough for you. So we're going to send you back over here. You're not the problem. They're the problem. We'll try it out over here. Who replaces uh, Brandon Jones at Junior Motorsports? That's up in the air. Carson Quapel is the leader, the catbird, uh, leader in the clubhouse catbird for that seat. It all comes down to funding, though, right? It's a lot like Josh Berry. It all comes down to funding. And if they can secure that funding for him, it seems like he is the guy that they want to have in that fourth car for 2025. Obviously, they already have Justin Allgaier, Sammy Smith, Connor Zilich signed in uh, up for 2025. Rather, having Carson Quapel join, that would complete their four-car team that they typically run. Uh, some people seem to think that they might run five cars. I'm not sold on that. I don't think they want to run five full-time cars, uh, barring somebody coming in with a ton of funding to make that happen. For now, I would assume that Carson Quapel is the guy that they want to get this deal done with. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Moving on to the topic of NASCAR charters. Our long national nightmare might be almost over after two years of negotiating between the Race Team Alliance, the teams of NASCAR, and NASCAR over this new charter agreement. We could be rapidly approaching the finish line if NASCAR uh, gets what they want out of this. NASCAR would like to have the charter negotiations wrapped up by this weekend. This weekend, Atlanta. They do not want this to spill over into the playoffs and distract from the importance of the playoffs. They would like to get that done. Is it going to get done? Mm, I'm not sure. So last week they sent over their latest proposal to the teams. Teams are looking at it. Some teams say, yeah, we're pretty confident in this one. Other teams are saying uh, there's still some work to do on it. Everybody kind of seems up in the air at this point. Curtis Polk from 2311 Racing did make some headlines this weekend when he wore a piece of paper taped to the back of his shirt at Darlington this weekend that read, please don't ask me about my charter. I don't want to disparage NASCAR and lose it with the uh, zipped lips emoji over it. So what he's referring to there is in the latest a charter proposal that was sent over by NASCAR, there is now a portion in that um, agreement that was sent over the proposal that says that you cannot disparage NASCAR in it because I guess they were tired of people talking badly about them. Listen, it's their sport. They can run with it. It's not a franchise model in the traditional sense of sense of a franchise model. You still have to answer to, uh, you know, the France family essentially in this so they can put in what they want. Our team's going to agree with it. I would assume that that's a pretty big statement right there saying they don't agree with that. Uh, it's an interesting thing to put in there. It's a lot like the NFL protecting the shield. This is NASCAR protecting the rainbow, or whatever we want to refer to it as. Um, I'm not as hung up on that as probably some people are, where they're like, they're trying to silence the critics. They're not silencing the critics. They essentially just, I think some people maybe take it over the line a little bit here. Um, 
and it's easy to do that, I guess, when one side doesn't talk and the other side does all the talking and the talking come from the teams and NASCAR typically doesn't um, comment on what's what's happening with charter negotiations. But it is believed Adam Stern and Sports Business Journal reported that the teams and the teams and NASCAR have agreed uh, on a new media rights split. What that is, we don't know yet. Uh, they're still working through a couple of other things, especially when it comes to new revenue, governance of the sport, decisions on, you know, they would like an input on decisions rather uh, about things that are going to cost them money, rule changes that are going to be costly, new cars, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. The other portion of it too, that I found interesting. So there's a couple of things that I found interesting in Adam Stern's uh, article. He says that team's concerns with the new agreement include whether they will be limited in having a say over costly rule changes, which we of course just talked about NASCAR limiting the ability of team members to speak freely as Polk shirt alluded to, and whether NASCAR will be impacting teams, traditional relationships, with its driver and ownership of its IP and other assets away from the track, according to people familiar with the matter. So that is interesting. If NASCAR is trying to control the intellectual property of teams and drivers away from the racetrack. And I wonder if this has something to do with like drivers selling their own merch and doing their own content not associated with NASCAR. And that's where I'm interested to see. I don't I honestly don't know. I can't really weigh one way or another. I'm just speculating here. Uh, about that because some drivers have really popular YouTube channels, really popular social media accounts where they show behind the scenes stuff. They get some, you know, video from the track and whatnot. Some drivers sell a ton of merch, Kyle Larson, uh, away from the NASCAR track that's not NASCAR uh, affiliated merchandise and make a lot of money off of it. So I'm interested to see what exactly all of that means, but it does feel like they're closer than they have been, which is a good thing. So we can finally stop talking about charters and hopefully they agree, uh, you know, to the seven years plus a seven year option after that. So it's a 14 year agreement. That would really be nice for all of us. A new NASCAR weekly show is coming to television this week, Thursday, September 5th. Inside NASCAR will be coming to True TV. Apparently my invitation to be on the show got lost somewhere in the mail. It will be a round table discussion type of show. Think inside the NBA but with NASCAR. Jordan Bianchi on the Teardown podcast this week while Jeff Gluck broke the news that Jordan Bianchi will be on this show. The dais will include, or the roundtable, whatever you want to call it, will include Jordan Bianchi, Shannon Spake, Steve Letarte, Mamba Smith, and a rotating driver. So of course you have Jordan Bianchi. He might dress like a Mary Poppins character, but the guy is the goat of breaking news currently in NASCAR. Having him on the panel is a must. You have to have him. Shannon Spake's been around NASCAR for a long time since the ESPN days. She's a great host and I have no problem with that selection at all. Steve Letarte, he's going to be able to explain to you the setups, the strategy, give you insight. He's a quality media member. Fine. Mamba Smith is the hype man for NASCAR. He's a chair on the Kevin Harvick podcast. I don't consume that content. Um, not my cup of tea, Mamba Smith, Dylan Smith. Not not for me. Some people like him. That's great. Um, but he'll be on the show as well. And then a rotating driver. Kyle Busch will be on the first episode or two, I think is what... Um, Jordan said, I love that. I hopefully they get some other drivers because I think there's some good drivers out there that do have personality that would be great on the show. And Kyle is certainly one of those guys. He's great on McAfee whenever he goes on as well. So, but if they want to get Charles Barkley and Ernie and Shaq and uh, Kenny to come and talk about NASCAR for an episode, I would absolutely love to see that. I'm interested to see this. Obviously, after, uh, after Race Hub went away, canceled at the uh, end of the Fox portion of the schedule to never return again. NASCAR not having a television presence other than just on race day is a bit of a bummer. So for them to have it back now is great. Obviously, uh, Warner Brothers Digital TNT will be getting a portion of the NASCAR schedule next year, as well as practice and qualifying. So them having a weekly show is cool. It's going to build momentum for them. Having it on True TV kind of stinks. And Practical Jokers is probably going to lead into it, maybe even host it. Who even knows? At this point, I wish it was more on TNT. But I get it because True will be having practice and qualifying, um, so they'll have more content over the course of the season than just those five races that will be on TNT. It's a toss-up. Right. But I am happy that there's a show coming back. I'm interested to see it. Unfortunately, it's likely going to go head to head against the first game of the NFL season this year, which is not exactly setting it up for success. But I would imagine it's probably going to be available on Max. Maybe we'll have to wait and see on that one. And moving on to the last bit of news. According to Jenna Fryer from the Associated Press, NASCAR has inquired about Paddle Awards availability for next year's NASCAR Cup Series race in Mexico City, which has to leave Daniel Suarez looking around like John Travolta and Pulp Fiction being like, do I not exist? 
to all of you people. Huge disappointment for Daniel, I'm sure. But for NASCAR and Pato, that would be absolutely massive. NASCAR trying to take away IndyCar's most popular star, regardless of IndyCar thinks he is or not, would be a huge steal for them. Of course, Pato got into a bit of uh, a spat back and forth with IndyCar CEO Mark Miles this past weekend in Milwaukee when Pato said, we should absolutely, being we, IndyCar being we, should absolutely be in Mexico before NASCAR ever announced their date, to which Mark Miles said, yeah, well, Pato is not even as popular as Adrian Fernandez was the last popular Mexican driver, but hey, at least he's on a few billboards now. And Pato responded with posting a photo of a billboard in Milwaukee by the racetrack that was just advertising the truck series race and not the IndyCar race. It's just another drop of the ball by by IndyCar and taking something too personally. Instead of trying to sit down with Pato and everybody else and try to figure out a solution here, the Penske Entertainment regime's first response is to always be reactive and you know immediately hit back instead of being like, yeah, you're right. We probably should have figured this out beforehand. But now, according to Jennifer Fryer from the AP, talks with Mexico City and NAS or an IndyCar are up and sprinting. So we'll see if that deal probably never gets done, if we're being completely honest. IndyCar has been talking about going to Mexico for the better part of a decade, hasn't found a way to get down there yet, just barely found a way to add one oval this year. And if it wasn't for the uh, streets of Nashville being clogged up by the Titan Stadium uh, development project, there wouldn't have been another you know oval added. So IndyCar doesn't think Pato's that popular. NASCAR certainly thinks Pato's very popular and would love to have him come down for the Cup Series race. The only problem with that, there is an IndyCar race on June 15th next year at Gateway. That race could be moved back. That would mean that IndyCar would be helping NASCAR out and taking their biggest start. Don't see them doing that. But it would also help out every other IndyCar driver that wants to go over and race the 24 hours of Le Mans because it's the same weekend. And that's really poor scheduling by IndyCar and definitely was done on purpose. It's a series that only has 17 races. They could have found another date. Uh, to have that gateway race, especially with its NASCAR date being pushed into the playoffs next year in the fall. That was seemingly done on purpose, it feels like. But if Pato does want to come over and run the NASCAR race, that could be the resurrection of the Project 91, sitting up in the coffin like The Undertaker, being like, we are back. And if you're McLaren, be careful, because Shane Van Gisbergen came over and ran that Project 91 car, and Triple Eight Engineer is like, yeah, go for it. Oh, crap, we lost him. He lives in America now. That could not happen in this situation. Pato Award will always be an IndyCar driver, but it would be fun to see him race in the NASCAR Cup Series, especially in his home city. So... Let me know in the comments what you think about Brandon Jones leaving JRM for Joe Gibbs Racing, the NASCAR Charter talk, NASCAR getting a weekly television show on True TV, as well as Pat Award maybe coming to run the NASCAR race if everything can work out fine. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.